Okay, so working out the rest of our gas loss. Um, yesterday, let me go back. Yesterday we or we talked about how boil. Whoa, I need a pen. Sorry, boils related, boils law related pressure and volume. Charles related volume and temperature. Well, what's left? We need to relate pressure and temperature. So that is what Gay-Lussac did. He found the relationship with gases between pressure and temperature. Basically, if you increase the temperature and you do not allow the volume to change, uh, then the pressure is going to go up because these molecules traveling faster are going to hit the walls harder. If you don't allow them to spread out, then the pressure is naturally going to go up. Y'all can read, you know, the stuff that's on this page here. Um, so this is what Gay-Lussac's law specifically states, if I asked you what kind of graph it is, well, it varies directly, so that means it is a positive slope, and this is the formula for Gay-Lussac's law. And again, you can rewrite this one, you know, just kind of cross multiply and say that P1T2 equals P2T1, if you want to. So that's a nice little picture, Gay-Lussac. And here's our example. If we take an aerosol can, now the reason I'm asking a question about an aerosol can is because it is a great demonstrator of Gay-Lussac's law. If, you know, let's say you're fixing your hair in the morning and you're using a can of aerosol hairspray and you're spraying the can and you notice, hey, wow, this can's getting colder. Well, according to Gay-Lussac's law, that makes perfect sense because as you push the nozzle on an aerosol can, you are actually relieving some of the pressure inside the can. Reduce the pressure, reduce the temperature. Flip side of that is also true. If you, um, you know, rapidly compress a gas, then you really quickly force those molecules to be very, um, you know, kind of close to each other, and so that causes friction, which then causes an increase in temperature. Uh, the the little um, compressed air cans that you use to clean your keyboards work the same way. Those air horns work the same way. You can actually get those suckers to get frost on them if you uh, spray them just right. They can decrease in pressure so quickly that their temperature falls so fast that it causes the water vapor in the air to frost on the outside of the can. Kind of cool stuff. So anyways, we have an aerosol can at a very typical aerosol can pressure of three atmospheres, slightly warmer than room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, the directions on the can tell you, hey, don't put this at anything higher than 52 degrees Celsius. Well, what's the gas pressure on the can at that temperature? Basically, what's the fail pressure? At what pressure will the aerosol can fail and spring a leak or maybe blow up or, you know, who knows what? Um, <clears throat> So we're going to solve this again using that same guess method I showed you the other day. We know that we're using Gay-Lussac's law because volume was not mentioned anywhere. So if volume is held constant, then we're using Gay-Lussac's law, which is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So I'm going to write that out over here. P1, T1, P2, T2. So my initial pressure was three atmospheres. My initial temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, but remember, we can't use Celsius, so we have to convert this to Kelvin. That's going to be 298. And then our second pressure is what we don't know, and our second temperature of 52 degrees Celsius converts to 325 Kelvin. So I need to rearrange my formula up here for P2, so I'm just going to multiply both sides by T2, and I get P1 T2 over T1, and that's equal to P2. So P1 is 3, T2 is 325, T1, 298. I don't know why, I just put parentheses around that. And plug this into your calculator, and this works out to 3.27 atmospheres. So we only increase the pressure on this can by like a quarter of an atmosphere, but that's going to be enough to make this can fail. And it, if you think about it, it makes sense because the cans themselves are already under a great deal of pressure and are already probably right at their breaking point. So if you add just a hair more pressure, you're going to make them explode. All right, so how to remember which law goes with which pair of variables. Well, if you take each of your variables and arrange them into an inverted triangle with pressure and volume on top, temperature on bottom, the same way we've been writing them in all of our equations so far, 
and then we're going to put the scientists' names in between the variables that they connect. So Boyle's connect, Boyle connected pressure and volume, Charles connected volume and temperature, Gay-Lussac uh, related pressure and temperature. So how do you remember what goes where? Well, there's a little saying you can use. Private gardens bring cheer. That's the very nice school appropriate mnemonic device that you can use to remember this. Just remember, start in the upper left hand corner. Private gardens bring cheer. If you want to use the other way, that was developed a couple of years ago. That's not really school appropriate. You go right ahead, but I'm not saying it in this video. So there you have it. Private gardens bring cheer. All right, well, you look at this, you can kind of see that these variables are already arranged in a little bit of a formula themselves. Most of the time in the real world, you don't get to hold one of these variables constant. They're all changing on you at the same time. And so because of that, you can take all three, Boyles, Charles, and Gay-Lussac, and combine them into one very creatively named combined gas law. And that looks like this. Uh, and again, if you don't want to memorize it like this, then you can remember it like P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1. And in all honesty, this is the only formula that you really and truly need to remember because this is the combination of all three of them. So if you remember this one, you're good to go. And you can, you know, let's say you're dealing with something where temperature stays the same, we'll just cross out temperature. If you're dealing with something where pressure stays the same, we'll just cross out pressure. And then you're left with the other gas law. Just remember which scientist goes with which variables and you'll be good. All right, so example for this one. We have a helium filled balloon has a volume of 50 liters at 25 degrees Celsius and 1.08 atmospheres. What volume will it have when I release it into the air and the pressure decreases quite a bit, as does the temperature? So I see all these variables means I know I'm using the combined gas law, so I'm just going to start writing everything out. P1, V1, T1, P2, P2, T2. So my first pressure is 1.08 atmosphere, my starting pressure. My starting volume was 50 liters. My starting temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. Again, we can't use Celsius, we have to use Kelvin. So 25 degrees Celsius is 298 Kelvin. Second pressure was the 0.855 atmospheres. Second volume, it says what volume will it have, so that's X. My second temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, so that is 283 Kelvin. So I know I need to rearrange my combined gas law. P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1. Rearrange it for my second volume. So V2 equals P1, V1, T2 over P2, T1. Now I just substituted my numbers. P1 was 1.08. V1 was 50. T2 was 283. On the bottom, P2 was 0.855. And T1 was 298. Plug this into my nice little calculator. 108 times 50 times 283 divided by 0.855 and 298. And I get 59.9788, which uh, well, that might as well just be 60.0 uh, volume, so liters. There we go. Another example. Balloon containing, see if I don't have time for another example. Probably won't have time for another example, so if you need to see this example worked out, um, I'll just tell you what the answer is on this one. Oh crap, I can't because I have to convert that, so I can't do that in my head. So if you need to see another example worked out, just come on in and see me.